go. All right, so wash our hands, eh? You're going to flip your hands, make sure you flip them into the sink. And not around the kitchen. All right, hands are dried. Don't forget to put your tea towel here. It's always useful to have it around your waist and then you're not looking for it when you need it. And then we sanitize the bench. Why are we sanitizing the bench? Hands up. Santiago. Get rid of all the germs, eh? Oh, look, it's not going to kill all of them, but it will reduce them to a safe number. Okay? Remember that um, if pathogenic bacteria is going to give you food poisoning, it's because it's in high numbers. If it's in low numbers, it's not too, it's not as, as much of a threat. All right, so, we need mixing bowls, we need something for our rubbish. Santiago, keep reading it at the recipe, please. Um, so, the dry mix. What's the dry mix today? Uh, uh, sift, self flour. How much? Um, one cup. One cup. Sift. Why are we sieving? Or I'd rather say sieving than sift. Why are we sieving the flour? Yes. To remove the lumps. To remove the lumps? Yep. What else? Yes. So it's not um, it doesn't clump up when it gets wet. So so what? It doesn't clump up when it gets wet. No, it will still clump up when it gets wet. So, so we're yeah. gonna remove the lumps, yes? So it's a powder instead of chunks of Alright, which is removing the lumps, a certain thing. And we remove any other foreign bodies. So write that word down, foreign bodies, because you come across that in food technology throughout the years when we talk about sieving flour. So we've got one level cup. It's not a cup measurement unless it's level. Okay? So that goes in. Self-raising flour. What else is in that flour to make it self-raising? Like baking powder, heard of that before? It's in the flour which is self-raising. So you need to adjust recipes um, and be aware that you've already got that in there to help rising. How does baking powder help rising? We want the muffins to rise, correct? Otherwise they're gonna stay flat and they'll be biscuits. How does the baking powder or bicarbonate of soda help rising? What does it do? It reacts with the water and the heat and creates a gas and it blows everything up. Carbon dioxide is created after reaction with heat and water and it rises. Okay, how much wholemeal flour, Santiago? One cup. One cup. Are we going to sieve the wholemeal flour? Yes. The recipe may tell you that. Watch the video. Don't. Okay? Don't save the wholemeal flour because in the wholemeal flour we have the husk, which is the brown meal. Okay? Which is the skin and the fibre. Take note, the fibre of the wheat is the husk, the, the brown stuff. You don't want to sieve that out. It gives us texture in the muffin and the fibre helps us do what? When we eat the fibre, what does it do in our bodies? Fiber aids digestion. Write that down somewhere. Fiber helps digestion. It cleans you out. So we don't want to take that away from the flour. So we put it directly in. A level cup of flour. Yep. One so, teaspoon of mixed spice. 
teaspoon of milk spice. All right. That's the pink one when you get over to your benches. Right, pink one if it's easier. Um, mixed spice. So we're going to sip the mixed spice. If you want to, you can do, there's no harm in that, just in case there is some foreign bodies in there. Foreign bodies could be any, any sort of thing that shouldn't be there through the processing that's got in there. Dirt, stone, whatever. You can put it through your sieve. Nothing, it's clean. All right, good. It smells nice too. What else are we putting in the dry mix? Anything? Brown sugar. Brown sugar. There's a song about brown sugar, isn't it? Oh, you heard a song about brown sugar? No? Yeah. Half a cup. Is that half a cup? No. Why not? Needs to be level. Needs to be level. Marvellous. All right, make sure it's compact as well. This sugar, you can compact down. It may have some air in there. To be honest with you, I'd rather weigh in grams. But you need to know that there's weight measurements and volume measurements. What type is this? Volume. Volume, good. Are we going to sieve it? No need. You won't be able to. Jeez, we're flying by, aren't we? Look how quick and easy this is. Alright, anything else in the dry mix? Three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips. Three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips. Alright, good. Chocolate chips. I haven't got three quarters of a cup, so I'm going to do a quarter cup three times. Pretty easy, isn't it? That's pretty good. Hey, mathematics, yeah? One, two, and that one's just one too much in there. Yeah. Three. You can't put too many in. What's next in that dry mixture? Stir. Stir. So mix that, yeah? Okay. You can use your wooden spoon. Why are we stirring it? Hold on, hands up. Yep. Oh, it's Isaac, like, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that all the flavours and stuff are mixed together, and also so that when you um, put it into the um, wet mix. Mm. Oh, the wet mix um, into that, yeah. The, like, there's not different comps of different. Good, so there's even distribution of ingredients is, is probably easier to say, young Isaac. But you were trying to say that, wasn't yeah. you? So good, you're thinking, well done. If we do this and mix it first, when we have the wet ingredients, there'll be an even distribution. All right? Good, it's as simple as that. Note the size of the bowl. Don't try and do it in this bowl, it's smaller, or even that one. You need room to mix. Okay. Alright, so do we move on to our wet ingredients now? Also take note of clean bench. Alright guys, let's carry on. We're just videoing this so we need to keep going. I don't want to edit. Yeah, sorry, I'll need your permission. Sign permission afterwards. All right, guys, wet ingredients, what we got? Henry, watch the video, okay? Watch the video before the practical. All right. All right, good. Wet ingredients, what's in there? Santiago, carry on. Um, mashed bananas. Mashed banana, mashed banana. Yeah? Yes, yeah, so two mashed bananas. Two mashed bananas. All right. Let's put it into a separate bowl, clean, separate bowl. Now let's just talk about the banana for a while, shall we? What colour is a nice banana? Yellow. Yellow. So if you see a green-ish banana, what's that like? What, what stage of its life is that in? Yes. Or just before, like, ready to be eaten. 
So what word are we going to use for that? Over this side, yes, right. Underripe. Yeah, unripe or underripe. Unripened, yes. Still green. So what's going to make that banana become ripe? What pro Stay longer. Stay longer. What's going to cause it to ripen? Leave it out. And, and what's going to cause it to ripen? He's going to feed what and what provide. If that's left out, it, it, it's in a perfect environment for what to happen. What change is going to happen with the banana? Yes? Pardon? Enzymes. Have you heard enzymes? Have you heard the word enzyme? You know what they are? They're going to... They're going to deteriorate that banana. It's a natural process of ripening through enzymatic activity. So because of the oxygen and the, the atmospheric conditions, enzymes will slowly break that down. If you leave it in a fridge, that will slow down because it's a different environment. And at lower temperatures, the activity of the enzymes is a lot slower. So these are going to be hard to mush because they're underripe and they're a lot more firm. You do like a nice little bit of brownness on the banana. Rubbish, straight in your bin. Clean your bench because these banana skins have been any, could have been anywhere. Even more green, more firm. Let's see how we go. Okay. Fork, quite firm as you can see. Just press them. This process will soften it's, it's not ideal ideally you want to be using quite old looking brown bananas because they're just softer and they'll form in the batter much better okay. it's quite hard to mush these Really, they should be more ripe. Okay, next thing, Santiago. Um, uh, lightly beat free eggs. Lightly beat free eggs. Okay. All right. So when we beat the eggs, why are we beating the eggs first of all? So the yolk mixes with the white. What else is happening? Air gets into it, good. Not only are you using the self-raising flour to leaven the muffin, i.e. leaven means to make it rise, we can use the eggs by putting air into the protein structure, okay? And that will also, when, when the air expands and the protein structure holds onto it, you get those little round holes in the, in the cake or the muffin, yeah? Good. Crack the eggs on a flat surface, usually that helps prevent Eggshell getting into the egg, it's not 100% foolproof, but it's better than doing it on a sharp edge. Uh, into the bowl, eggshell straight into a bin, okay, that's how you need to work. Flat edge, eggshell straight into the bin. If you get egg white on your bench, give it a wipe. Okay, eggshell straight in there. Boom. And we're going to use the same fork as the bananas to beat the eggs. All right. Mixing the yolk with the white, can you see the air bubbles? We're getting air into the protein. So when do you know you've finished beating the eggs? When it's light, slightly lighter in colour, you've got air bubbles in there and there's no separation of oak, yolk and white. It's all become one. And when that happens, it gets a little bit more liquid as well because until you've broken down that protein a bit, it's still quite firm. 
Uh, can you see the air? You want that? Good. Next thing, Santiago. Uh, Mix one third of a cup of buttermilk. Third of a cup of buttermilk. What's buttermilk, anybody? And where's it getting mixed into? The egg? Um, the wet mixture. So. so all that's going into one, is it? What's buttermilk? Adam? Creamy milk. Oh look, it's fermented. Alright, so it smells quite acidic and is quite acidic. Alright. But it, it's nice. You sometimes use it to marinate proteins, chickens and things like that to break down and tenderise meats because of the acidic nature. Alright, into there. How beautiful is that? So that's our wet mixture. Anything else to add to it? One third of a cup of oil. One third of a cup of oil. Why are we putting oil in there? What's that going to do? Keep it moist. It's a fat as well. It's not a rich fat. Um, yeah. Fat's going to shorten some gluten that's in the flour as well. Is that it for the wet mix? Beautiful. Just combine the wet mixture as well. Bring that together. And you'll find often when you're baking or whatever you're doing, you do dry and wet and bring them together. You've all done that before, haven't you? Making cakes. All right, so we're ready to bring those together, are we? How do we bring them together? What does it say? Oh. Yep. Right. Gradually add wet mix to dry mix. Gradually add the wet mix to dry mix. Yep. Until all ingredients are combined. All right, good. Until all ingredients is combined. So do it in threes, eh? Now, just mix it all together. Three bits. Try and mix in the previous egg before you do the next one. And this is where you hope the quantities are right because if it's not, it's going to be either too dry or too wet. one goes in so that on that point guys it's important that you read the recipe and make sure you get the correct quantities in the recipe so during your practical if you have a question make sure you've read the recipe before you ask me the question because my answer to you will be what does the recipe say if you still don't understand then we can talk about it but the purpose of the demonstration is to see what happens when we read the recipe and do what the recipe says. So I'm doing what Santiago is telling me, okay? So you need to then do what you tell yourself or what your partner tells you, all right? Now this batter comes together quite nicely. I'm trying to keep the air in with the eggs and you can see there's bubbles of air, okay? But when the heat hits them, it's all good. Tins. You get your... So what ingredient has the fibre in here, since we're talking about fibre today. Yeah. Which flour? Self-raising? Yeah. The wholemeal flour. But why doesn't the self-raising? Because, yeah, but it's also been processed and this, the husk has been removed during the processing, hence it's a white flour. All right. 
Now we could pipe these in. I would if I was doing it differently. We don't have time or enough piping bags to do that. So we're going to use a spoon. However, the way I want you to do it, to try and not have so much mess, because it can become messy, all right, is get your mix on a spoon, hold it vertically to the case, and scoop it in. So I'm using two spoons. I'm not just having it hanging off and dripping and dropping it in, hoping for the best. I want to place it in. Try and keep it off the edges, because if you get it on the edge, what's going to happen? Yes? It's going to burn. It's going to burn. Burn, you get the smell possibly going throughout the rest of the muffin, and you don't want that, okay? And it's not as easy to clean either. All right, so go in with your spoon, vertical, and just feed it in. Trying not to get any mixture on the outside of the tin. Okay. Okay. So as as we did when we played up the fruit salad, we're using two hands to, to handle the ingredients and so on. 